Romans chapter 1 today. Romans chapter 1. We'll turn to Romans 1, but I'll ask this as I try to, we'll try to take uh, a few minutes. If you have a question about something, I'll try it. Yes, Danielle. Right. 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 They're heretics. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's like, okay, here, here's the thing about that. We have absolutely no idea what that even means. Uh, because the, the, the Mosaic law had not been given... And if you read in, in Leviticus, I think it's about chapter I think it's about chapter twelve or thirteen, it gives the definition of of clean and unclean. But way back when, when Noah went on the ark, it's not really it's really not clear because I, I read that, looked it up, tried to find an answer, and it's not really clear what it means by the clean and unclean, uh, what he took on. Uh, the clean he may have taken on to use the sacrifice when they got off the ark. I, I simply, I don't know that anybody knows really why the Bible says seven clean animals. that They went on two by two, but there were seven uh, clean animals, etc. I can't really tell you the answer to that. So you got me. But again, I, I found, you, you know, most people we always read they went on two by two, which they did. But the idea of, of the seven clean were just doesn't even say what they were. Doesn't tell us, so we don't have really any idea. We can only surmise what it might have meant. But we we have really no idea what it meant by those seven. Anybody else? Yes. 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 He had an aquarium. No, I mean, it's like, uh, okay, yes. When you read that, it, it says that uh, when you read about Noah and the animals, that God destroyed everything that had the breath of life. Now, we know that whales are mammals. We know that. But I would suggest to you that they merely stayed in the sea. You know, people ask the question, how did he get dinosaurs on the ark? Well, it, the Bible does not say that he put, you know, we, we think of a brontosaurus, how big a brontosaurus is. Uh, it doesn't say he put a full-grown brontosaurus on the ark. The average size of animals is about the size of a German shepherd. That's the average size. And we know there are elephants. We know that there are, there are big dinosaurs. We know that. But it does not say that he put uh, full-grown animals. I mean, if they were on there for a year, which they were, you know, people say, well, how did he get all the food to feed them? The uh, Bible doesn't give us all the answers. We can surmise that perhaps they went into some kind of a hibernation thing, uh, like animals do uh, around here. Maybe they hibernated for a year. We, we don't know all that there is to know. We do know that everything that had the breath of life that God wanted to preserve, got on that ark, and, uh, they, and they got off of the ark uh, and spread across the face of the earth. But again, it does not say that he put full-grown dinosaurs on the, on the ark. Uh, the ark was probably, the ark was like, I think if I remember, 400, I think it was it's, it, approximately 450 feet long, which is longer than a football field. It had three stories to it. Uh, I, I do know this. It was 75 feet high. Uh, it had three stories to it. Uh, they uh, had to have taken food on them for themselves the last for a year. Uh, perhaps some of the clean animals that they took on, they may have eaten some of those. I, I don't know. Again, we're only surmising that we do not know. So... Uh, the study of the ark and the flood, of course, is quite interesting. 
uh, down in Kentucky, if you ever get down that way, Ken Ham and, and the ans Answers in Genesis have built a, a, uh, a, a replica of what we think the ark. Because it says that, he said, put a window in it. Well, did the window run the entire length of the ark, or was there merely one window at the top of it? Uh, we know that it was 400 and some feet long. We know that it was 75 feet high. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it was 45 feet wide. Uh, this church is 40 feet wide. Uh, so it would be five feet wider. I think it was 45 feet by 75 by a little over 400. Uh, and again, if you'll read and tr try to compare some of the dates, you'll find that it, it only took, it did not take them 120 years to build the ark. It only took him about somewhere between 60 and 75 years to build the ark, which is still a long time. I mean, let's face it, it's a long time to build a ship. But the whale thing, I believe all the fish, all the fish in the sea, that God merely preserved them. A whale living in the sea. Whales, of course, don't live on land. And even though they, they breathe, that they would have been able to sustain life through the flood. Okay. Anybody else? Well, once, twice. All right, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Last time, last time, we had gotten down through verse 23 when it says, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man into birds and the four-footed beast and the creeping things. And again, you can take that for what it's worth. Uh, but really, that is what men changed the image of God into, and that man worship, as it says there in the next verse, if I can read it right there, uh, verse 25 says this, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature. So when we go back to verse 23, change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, and to birds and the four-footed beast and to creeping things. And in verse 25, who changed the truth of God. They served these gods more, and uh, they did not serve God. They, they, they simply did not. Now, look, there have always been people who found grace in the eyes of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I've said before, I believe that when Noah started preaching at 120 years out from the flood, there were probably save what we would call saved people. I, I believe they probably were. I believe that Methuselah probably was. Um, there were probably people saved, uh, but they all died. And the only people left, as Jesus would say in, in Luke chapter 17, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith in the earth. When it got down to Noah, there were very few people. When they got off of the ark, of course, uh, they, man degenerated rapidly and got away from God to from uh, Noah is found in chapter 6, 7, and 8. By chapter 10, men have degenerated until where they are worshiping the stars. Uh, they are our astrologers. Uh, they read their daily horoscope uh, in the morning paper. Uh, that's how they, they conducted their lives. And so when they, the, in an effort to make uh, some kind of the Tower of Babel, of course, God went down and um, confounded their languages there. You know, people said, well, what, what do you think the original language was, English? Everybody spoke English. Of course they did. How do I know what it was? Here's what I think it probably. And I, I heard somebody say this, so I'll just say this. If you want to know what I think, I think probably Hebrew may have been the original language and everything was confounded off of that. But that's me. You know, again, I'm surmising, but I would say that, that God, that maybe that's what happened. But that's just me. But anyway, so anyhow, we, are, we got down to that verse 23. and verse 24, it says, wherefore God, or yes, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust, well, because of their contempt for religion. God, God gave, God gave them God let them do whatever it is that they wanted to do. God gave up on mankind. 
Uh, and I know that we've come a long way since the, the flood. I, I know that. Uh, there are many reasons to, uh, for skeptics. There are many reasons for skeptics to look at the Bible, and one of them is the flood. And we're not going to look at that this morning. But many things have changed since then. Look over, if you would, at 2 Timothy for just a moment. 2 Timothy and 1 Timothy and 2 Peter. First, or 2 Peter and 2 Timothy are a great deal alike. But in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy we, read, we read about this. 2 Timothy, oh, about chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3 probably familiar passage to you, 2 Timothy 3, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And then it gives us a description of, of what it would be like, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, boasters, proud, blasphemers. And again, I know people will always, will always come back with this argument, well, preacher, we've always had these problems. I mean, we've always had these problems. Well, yes, it's true, we have. But in the last days, or in, in the last days of the last days, because we know this, in Second or First John chapter 2, hold your place right there. Look at First John chapter 2 for a moment. First John chapter 2, and it tells us this. In First John 2 and verse 18, little children, it is the last time. So, from the time of John until now, we've been living in the last days. Uh, of, and and say, so, well, it's been 2,000 years. Yes, I know it's been 2,000 years. And so when we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3 about in the last days, perilous times, in the last days of the last days, these things are going to increase at a rather rapid pace. Uh, these things are going to happen. Uh, we know that this past uh, week, this guy uh, walked in and, and shot all those uh, Muslim uh, people up. And, uh, you know, people say, well, well, the problem is guns. No, the problem is not guns. If, if you go on, like, YouTube and type in toy gun commercials that they used to run, they used to run army gun commercials, and they used to run, and I used to have a machine gun that sounded like a machine gun when I was a kid. And I used to have, I used to have cap pistols. Um, I, you know, and, and uh, I used to, uh, uh, the first time I figured out there wasn't a Santa Claus is when I found a Winchester gun in my mother's closet, and I knew that she wasn't playing with it. And so, uh, uh, so it's like, when, when we were kids, and some of us people who are older know that when we were kids, we used to have toy guns. Guns are not the problem. The problem is people's hearts. Did you know that in England, they have more people who are killed by knives so that now they want to put a biochip in every knife they sell so that if you stab somebody, they can figure out who did it. I mean, the stupidity that we go to uh, because stupid, ungodly wretches of people do stupid things. Uh, BJ? Absolutely. He said Cain killed Abel with a rock. It's like, so let's ban rocks. Let's ban knives. Uh, if guns cause, you know, people to do bad things wrong, then we surely ought to ban automobiles because drunks get behind them and they kill people. We're not going to ban automobiles, and we're surely not going to ban alcohol because the government makes too much money off of it. But I'm saying that, that in, in, we are living in the last time. Was it as bad 150 years ago as it is now? Well, that's obvious that it wasn't. Did, were Bill, did Billy the Kid, Jesse James, John Wesley Harden, did those guys run around, rob banks, shoot people, kill people? Was John Dillinger a bad guy? Yeah, absolutely. 
Were Bonnie and Clyde bad people? Absolutely they were. But, but as, the, as the age progresses, the Bible makes it clear that things are going to get progressively worse and worse and worse, and we are living in the last time. And God gave people up. God just said, okay, you don't want to serve me? You don't want to, as it said in verse 25, they worship and serve the creature, uh, corruptible men, uh, four-footed beasts, uh, fowls and creeping things. If you want to serve them, okay, go ahead. And God gave them up to let their minds wander wherever it wants. I know that we're living. And look, I, I believe in climate change. I believe in climate change. The, ch climbing, the, ch climbing. the climate is changing uh, from being 30 below zero to being 60 above zero. I believe in climate change. I I'll say this to you again. You may not believe it, but I'll, I'll say it to you. There is absolutely no empirical evidence for climate change. One of the hottest decades in history was the 1930s, during the Dust Bowl era. We haven't even begun... We, had, we don't even approach what it was like back then. There's no empirical evidence for climate change. The only thing that they have are computer models, which a computer will say whatever, whatever information you feed into a computer, that's what you'll get back out. Computer models say that, as Al Gore said, Al Gore said this 10 years ago, that... The, the polar ice caps will all have been melted. Well, that sure proved to be true, didn't it? All the polar bears are going to disappear. There are more polar bears now than there ever have been. I'm saying that there is no empirical evidence for what modern-day people call, uh, at first, at first, you remember, at first we were going into a deep freeze. We were going back into the ice ages. Well, when that didn't prove to be true, well, now, now we're getting too hot. I think I've read somewhere, I, I can't remember, that the most change that they've seen is like two-tenths, two-tenths of one degree. But one of uh, almost every one of the Democratic candidates for president all support, it, it, it's like, Okay, I'm only asking you, you think about this. You know, they, they, well, de Blasio says we got to, we're going to have meatless Monday in schools. That way we'll save on, uh, we won't have as much beef around. Because if you got a lot of cows around, then you got a lot of cow gas around, and that's going to raise the temperature. You know how stupid that is? Think about this for a minute. How many remember? Uh, how many remember Buffalo Bill? Anybody remember Buffalo Bill? Personal friend. You know how he got his name, right? He used to shoot buffalo. Do you remember back in your high school teaching that the, at one time the plains were black with buffalo as far as the eye could see? Boy, do you think maybe? They might have passed gas. Do you think they might have raised? No. I'm telling you that, that you say, well, what is all this about? God gave them up to do whatever they wanted. This, this climate change thing is, is really, it is, you know, that, that, that woman said that we are going to disappear in 12 years. I basically think that's what she said. We have 12 years, 12 years to clean up what? What? It was just as cold this winter as it is every other winter. I didn't notice any uh, uh, climate change this winter. Uh, just as cold. Um, and so God gives, God lets people do. You say, preacher, I can't understand why people... Because God gave them up. God lets people do 
whatever you say. Well, I don't understand why. Uh, you know what? What's what I don't understand is, in uh, in nine eleven, I think nine eleven wasn't nine eleven in two thousand and one. Okay, that man, we were, and and I'll say this: in nineteen fifty two, there was a law passed that no Muslim could hold office in the United States government. In 2001, we had said, well, we're not ever going to forget that. We won't ever forget there were 19 Muslim terrorists that flew those planes into the Pentagon, into a hole in the ground, and, and uh, uh, into the trade centers in, in New York City. But now we elect them to Congress. Now they are anti-Semitic. And the Democratic Party is uh, supporting that. They, they have no backbone. Ken? Right. Right. woman in Congress, it's going to get worse because they can outvote us. Right. And, and in England, in England, if you'll look at the statistics, we're getting off a little bit here, but, but here again, worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Uh, the Muslim population in England is, is in the minority but they hold the mayorship in the biggest cities of England. Now, we'll stop for a minute and think about this. What is it? Okay, we can look at climate change, and to some people, that's a religion. It, it is a religion. Uh, they are, uh, you know, to some people, uh, Huh? Fanatical. Yeah, they're fanatics. That's what they are. Some people are tree huggers. Uh, they, they worship trees. I don't think we should ever cut a tree down. Now, I don't, but tree huggers, you know, they're, they're like, we should never cut trees. Uh, and and they, they, you say, preacher, that's kind of, well, wait a minute, though. Because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God lets people... We say, I can't understand a lot of things that happen, preacher. That is because God gave people up to let them do whatever they wanted and want to do. And we are living in an age that is living proof that God has given that. Because you say, well, preacher, I, that, the things that happen just don't make sense. They don't make sense. What? Because God gave them up to do that, which is, notice what it says there in that verse 24. Um, I know we didn't go back to 2 Timothy, but we will. Let me just read that Romans chapter 1 and verse 24. Wherefore God gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now, now, Back in 2 Timothy, all right? Perilous times will come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Maybe it was true. Maybe it was. I, I, can't, I, I can't speak for uh, in the 40s and 50s in America. I can't speak for that time. But it seems to me for whatever that may be worth, that we live in a, a, a vulgar, blasphemous society. I don't know if people talk that way. I don't know if they talk that way in the 40s or 50s or not. I, I, I don't know if they did or not. But you, if you get around lost people at all, and if you work, you're around lost people. That's just the way. And I always look at it. Lost people are going to do what lost people are going to do. I, I try to see it that way. But it seems to me we live in a very coarse society now. Uh, 
you got to bleep the president out because of some of the things that he says. Uh, do I appreciate? Yeah, I appreciate the president, but some of the things that he says. So blasphemers, disobedient to parents. I don't, when I was in school, and I'm just, I'm just saying, when I was in school, we didn't have the kind of classes they have for kids now. I know, I know for this to be true. Uh, Carol was telling me about a teacher that was attacked by a student who was out of work for seven years because of being attacked by a student in our area. Attacked by, I never heard of that when I was a kid, when I was in school. Now maybe, maybe you did, but I never heard of a teacher getting, I never heard of kids picking the computers up and throwing them out the window. I never heard of it. Oh, Matt did. Matt did. Go ahead. Great, you didn't want to touch anybody. Oh, amen. <laughs> there you go. Teacher had character. Oh, oh, wait a minute now. We're not bringing that in. The board, the bo yeah, they, they always called it the Board of Education was applied to the seat of learning. And um, as Matt would say, I, and I'll, 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 uh, I'll get to Ryan's comment in a minute whatever that's worth. No, no. But it's like, uh, I remember in the sixth grade. I remember that, you know, cats the way the mice will play. Mr. Bunner did not come to school one day. I don't know why. He was a godly man. I remember him saying this in class. He said, I don't care what they say. I'm going to read that Bible in my class. It was in, it was uh, close to the time they had not passed it. This was in 1961, 62, 63 is when they outlawed the Bible reading in school. But Mr. Bunner was a Sunday school teacher. He was from West Virginia, whatever that may mean. Um, he was from West Virginia. He was a godly man, taught Sunday school. And I remember that there was some acting up going on, and he wasn't there one day. And the principal, or the vice, the sub told him, wrote it down, I guess. He came back, I, rem I remember very, very clearly. He came over to uh, Bobby Blackburn, and he took that yardstick, and he whacked him. I mean, he didn't, here, Bobby, don't do that. No, I mean, he whacked him. And then there was another, I can't remember who the, Jenkins, were you? No, no, it wasn't me that time. But there was another kid right in front, and I remember he whacked him too. So you say, well, Ryan said, well, we can't really do that. And I understand that. I understand that teachers are, I'm only asking, did anybody ever get put off a bus when you were a kid, BJ? Your brother. Sure, blame it on your brother. He's not here. It's probably you. But anyway, uh, it was like, oh, if you did that now. Some kid said to me the other day, let me off the end of the road and I can walk home. I said, I can't do that. If something happened to you, he said, well, what's going to happen to me? Back in, I, I remember my first bus driver's name was Joe. The only reason I remember him is because last day of school, every year he took us to a soft ice cream place and bought soft ice cream for everybody on the bus. I remember that. My next bus driver, his name was Bill. I, look, you just, you, you did not act up in school and on the bus because teachers made you afraid. I'm not sure, I don't know whether it's true or not. I never found out, didn't want to find out. But the rumor when I was in high school was that the principal had a paddle with holes drilled in it. He said, well, why holes? One, less air resistance. And secondly, those holes stung when they hit you. Not, I'm not speaking from experience. I'm just saying that there, was, th there is this age, in, this age of rebellion that we live in where... Kids are not afraid to attack a teacher. I said, I said to Carol, why didn't the teacher defend herself? Now I might get fired, but some kid attacks me, I'm going to open the door and kick him out. You know? You get fired, preacher, if you do that. Okay. I came looking, I'll leave looking. Kenny?
Well, yes. Right. 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 Kenny, you animal. But it's like, and, and so, you know, the, God gave them up. You say, well, why do we live? Preacher, we live in such an age now where kids are disobedient to their parents. They're disobedient in school. I know this to be true. Some kid acted up, got sent to the principal's office, called his parents in. Principal said, this is what you're going to do. The kid said, I'm not going to do that. He looked at the parents and they said, no, he's not going to do that. It's like Ken said, you know, Ed, Ed called up his mother and said, Kenny is an animal. And uh, he got beat at home. I'm just, okay, so we're living in, in times where uh, uh, kids are disappearing. Let me just read, finish reading that. Uh, unthankful, unholy. They are, people are unthankful. Have you thanked God lately for what he's given you? Without natural affection, that can be taken two ways. Uh, one is this. I, I meant to show this. Maybe I'll show it this afternoon if I can find it. Uh, I, I, I've said this, I've said it. I don't know how anybody, I don't know how anybody can uh, kill a baby. I just don't, I don't see that. Well, they don't have natural affection, preacher. I read this, uh, some teenage girl wanted to go to a birthday party, so she shoved her little baby down the trash chute in the apartment she lived in. So, preacher, how could anybody do that? How could anybody kill their children? And we, we hear on, on the news occasionally uh, people, uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be sexist in this, I, I can just, uh, several times we've heard of, of women who went crazy and killed all their kids. And I'm sure that men probably do that. I'm not trying to, you know, select one over the other. Yes, ma'am. It says, inventors of evil things. Right. All these terrible games that the kids play that are just so, their minds are occupied with that all the time. Okay. All right. Let's stop right there for a minute. Uh The only Nintendo game I ever played was NASCAR racing with Ben. And I could never beat the guy, so eventually I gave that up. He cheated. But if you're not cheating, you're not trying. But anyway, but some of these games today that they have out, um, yeah, they're terrible. And, and, and you become calloused to life. I mean, you shoot 500 people and see the blood splatter on these games or chop their heads off or whatever. You become callous to life. And, and hardened to those kind of things. I'm not saying we don't live in a real world because we do live in a real world, but these imaginary games that they come up with and, and they promote, and, and some of them, they, they make it very clear they're not for little kids to even play. Well, why would you want big kids to play them then? But again, you say, well, preacher, why? why? Because God gave them up to do whatever they want to do. If they don't want to serve God, see, we are, I am, and I think you are, we are promote, we believe in, in the free will of man. That man is free to choose God or to reject God. Well, the only reason we choose God is because the Holy Spirit drew us one day. We heard the gospel, but men are so hardened. He that, uh, Proverbs, uh, it's either 27 or 29, 1, he that hardens his neck oft times being reproved shall suddenly be cut off, and that without remedy. Uh, the spirit will not, my spirit shall not always strive with man. That people who have been convicted and convicted and convicted and, and 
and put God off and put God off and put God off, eventually come to the place, whether this story is true, I have no reason to believe that it's not, that Aaron Burr, who was uh, vice president, originally the vice president was the second place, was the first place loser. And so uh, Aaron Burr lost to Thomas Jefferson. Uh, supposedly when Aaron Burr was in, in Harvard or Yale, I believe it was Harvard, uh, there was a revival going on. And he just simply said to God, God, if you leave me alone, I'll never bother you again. Eventually, Burr was arrested for treason. He killed Alexander Hamilton, the first secretary of the treasury. Uh, killed Alexander Hamilton in a duel. Uh, he was uh, uh, arrested for treason for trying to to get part of the United States, to take part of the United States. Uh, and again, men who harden their heart against God. Men who harden their heart against God. And so, uh, as Mrs. Weber said, uh, we see all these vile, and I, I mean, you know, vile games that kids play and their heart becomes hardened uh, to the things of God. And they, know, they actually know very little about God and it goes on and says they're traitors. Um, we, we, do not, we do not promote, and I, I'm not saying this, I'm saying this as general, I'm not saying it as, as uh, individually, but in general we do not promote nationalism. Nationalism is considered to be something that is bad today. Uh, uh, somebody came out this week and said the national anthem is too nationalistic and we don't need to play it uh, anymore. Um, you know, there used to be that we would engender pride in being an American. Uh, the average age, the average age of those that went ashore at, at Normandy Beach was 19 years old. 19 when they went ashore at Normandy. And thousands were killed. And in Tom Brokaw's book, The Greatest Generation, referring to those of that generation of World War II. When the guy came in after Halloween, and you may remember this story, and he was upset because the kids had torn up the town. And the post lady said, oh, Joe, whatever his name may have been, what were you doing when you were 16? He said, I was going ashore at Guadalcanal. We live in a generation now where I'm not sure. Well, we, we had America. America is, you know, the, the cry today, America was created by a bunch of rich white men who wanted to own slaves, and that's all they were concerned about. That is, you know, and we're trying to change our history. We're, tr we're trying. I, I, will, I will say this. I'll just say it in passing. You do whatever you want. I'll tell you what you do. Go home and read a little bit. Do you know that when the, in the, who knows this? What was the name of the treaty that was signed at the end of the Revolutionary War? What? Come on, class. No, that was World War I. No, that was when we declared our independence. The Treaty of... No, somebody already said that, and it's wrong. The Treaty of Paris. Oh, yeah, that's right, preacher. Yeah, we remember that now. But in the Treaty of Paris, the Treaty of Paris said that they were 13 individual sovereign states. That's what they were. In the Virginia, New York, and Rhode Island ratification agreement, they agreed that if the federal government began to usurp more power, than what the states were willing to give, they could legally leave the Union. That was New York and Rhode Island. That wasn't some southern outfit. Uh, to the victor belong the spoils. The victors get the right to history. Uh, we're trying to change our history. Every day you see where somebody defaced another Civil War monument. Well, I've seen where they defaced Columbus, where they defaced uh, George Washington, where they, you know, they're, they're trying to change our history. I'm just saying that probably, look, the Confederate battle flag, which is the thing that is most often, uh, it wasn't even the national flag of the Confederacy. It was a battle flag. 
Well, that's racist. It's totally... You don't understand the Civil War if that's what you think. Was slavery an issue? Of course it was. Of course it was. But the guys in the North and South, they didn't care one whit about slaves when they were fighting one another. The South thought they were fighting another war of independence, and the Union thought they were fighting to save the Union. But we're trying to change all that now. We're trying to get rid of it. Well, uh, they're just a bunch of wit rich white men. See, we're trying to change well, what has happened. I don't know how we got over that far. I'm just saying that, that God gives men up. You say, well, preacher, I just don't understand that. I just don't understand that. It's let God lets people do what they want to do. God, because God gave them up. God just, okay. You don't want, uh, Connie? Right. Right. I forget. I can't tell you. By, but again, you know, sixty nine point seven point uh, sixty nine point seven percent of statistics are made up on the spot. So this one's kind of made up on the spot too. But anyway, I think. I've read this. They're like, they're like four or five churches close every day. I mean, you say, well, why is that? If you go out and ask an average, hey, would you like to come to church? No. Why not? Not interested. Why not? I'm just not interested. You know anything about God? Nope, don't know anything about God, but I'm not interested. Why is that? Because we now live in a, in, a, in a country where, can we say that, they're, as Connie said, that people are doing the bidding of the devil. He said, well, why would any, anybody do that, preacher? Because God gave men up to do whatever. We got we to gotta close, but I want you to notice 24, then notice verse 26 of chapter 1 of Romans 21 or 24, says this, God also gave them up. God just let them go. Notice verse 26, for this cause God gave them up. God just said, okay. Um, because we did not like to retain God in our knowledge, and in 1963, the Supreme Court outruled, outlawed prayer and Bible reading in school, said you can't, uh, they have somewhat refined that, and to this that Ryan cannot stand up and in school, lead the school, lead the class in Bible study. We're going to study the Bible today. Uh, we're going to read the Bible today. They've, they've somewhat refined that. If you want to take your Bible to school and read it, uh, they may try to stop you, but they can't. Okay, your Bible's on yourself. Okay, they can't stop a kid from, or a teacher from having it, but you can't teach it anymore. Uh, Maybe in a, if a, a, a two-week history class, you may teach what the Bible is, but to actually, a teacher actually teach. Now, this is what God Almighty says. Uh, okay, we're going to have prayer today, and we're going to pray and ask God to bless. You, you, you can't do that. God gave them up, it says again in verse 26. Now, because God gave them up and let them do whatever they wanted, the 1960s, any of us who lived through the 60s, of course, 60s was called the sexual revolution. God, hey, you don't want to serve me? God gave men up to do whatever they wanted to do. You do whatever you want. Um, how can I say this? I, I, know, I know somebody just lately said this, yeah, uh, my son is moving in with his uh, girlfriend. We didn't even blink. Where, where they, uh, what is that verse where they, oh, it's in Jeremiah, where they ashamed 
Look at Jeremiah chapter 6, and we've got to be through today. Jeremiah 6, and we're through today. Jeremiah chapter 6. Let's see if I can find this. Uh, 6, 6, 6. Uh, yeah, verse, uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 13. Uh, For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one of them is given to covetousness. And according to what Paul writes in Ephesians, covetousness is idolatry. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, even everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed also the herd of my daughter of my people, slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. We, we, we live at a time now where people aren't even ashamed of what, what used to be done in the dark. People aren't even ashamed of that. They don't even blush about it anymore. They think nothing about it. Well, what's happened? Well, in the 60s, we see what God gave them up to do whatever they wanted. Boy, then... In verse 26, 28, we'll look at it next week because we're out of time. Thank you. Were they ashamed? No, they weren't ashamed. Not ashamed at all. Not ashamed. And we live in a country. I'm just saying, again, as Paul says, and Peter says also in 2 Peter, that, boy, in the last days, we're gonna, you're going to see perilous times. Are gonna, Lou? Read verse 16 Go ahead, Lou. I just closed my Bible. We will not. You know what's so? We will not. Hey, you want to go? Nah, I'm not interested in God. I'm not interested in the church. Hey, but this is what the Bible, I don't care what the Bible says. The Bible is like immaterial to people today. They don't care what God says. And we're not going to do what God says. And God says, okay, because you don't want to do what I say. I'll let you go, whatever you want. I said this last week. And we are through. We are like that ship in Acts chapter 27 where they cut the rudder bands and they lifted the anchors and they let the ship drive in whatever direction it wanted until it crashed on the seashore, on the shoreline. And the ship was broken up. Now, here's a good thing. Everybody that was on the ship got to shore safely. That's a good thing. Uh, are we going to make it? Absolutely, we're going to make it. Doesn't matter if the old ship sinks here, but we're going to make it. All right, we got to, Father, we thank you again. Lord, for your word, we, we look at the world situation and say, boy, Lord, how bad it is. But, Lord, you've given us up. You, men do whatever is convenient for them, whatever they think. As a man thinketh, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was no king. God is not king anymore. Jesus is not King Jesus anymore to the, to the world. There, there were, Lord, we, we understand that there was a day in America where even lost people would go to church once in a while. Not anymore. It's like trying to pull teeth to get some lost person to come to church. And accept your spirit, draw somebody. And Lord, I, I realize if Jesus be lifted, he'll draw all men. I, I understand that, Lord. Lord, we just live in those days. And Lord, if it was the last time when John wrote, surely we must be living in the last days of the last days as we see these things. But Lord, we are commanded to look up for salvation, redemption, draweth nigh. Thank you for that. Lord, bless the next hour. Thank you again for all the folks who came out today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.